Good afternoon. NATO foreign ministers have just met to discuss the situation in Afghanistan. What we have witnessed in recent days is a tragedy for the people of Afghanistan. The situation remains very difficult and unpredictable. Ministers discussed a number of uh, different uh, issues. First, the continuing evacuation of people from allied and partner countries and Afghans who worked with us. This is our immediate priority. NATO has worked around the clock to maintain operations at Kabul International Airport, allowing thousands of people to leave. Around 800 NATO civilian personnel have worked to keep the airport open, providing air traffic control, fuel and communications. I pay tribute to them as they work uh, in very difficult circumstances. I also thank the military forces of NATO allies, in particular Turkey, the United States and the United Kingdom, and our partner Azerbaijan for their vital role in securing the airport. And I thank all the allies who have today pledged to receive Afghans at risk. Second, we discussed our approach to those in power in Kabul. The eyes of the world are on Afghanistan. We expect the Taliban to uphold their commitments and ensure that Afghans does not again, that Afghanistan does not again become a safe haven for international terrorism. The Taliban must put an end to violence around the country and uphold the fundamental rights of all Afghan citizens, men, women and children. Over the years, NATO's presence and support of the whole international community have allowed Afghans to make unprecedented social, economic and political progress. Any Afghan government which attempts to undo, undo this progress risks international isolation. Third, ministers agreed that we will not allow terrorists to threaten us again from Afghanistan. NATO's engagement was in response to the terrorist attacks on the United States on 9-11. Our objective was to prevent terrorists from using Afghanistan as a safe haven for further attacks on us. And no terrorist attacks on Allied soil have been organized from Afghanistan over the last two decades. These gains must be preserved for our own security. Finally, there are hard questions that we need to ask ourselves over our engagement in Afghanistan. We were clear-eyed about the risks of withdrawing our troops, but the speed of the collapse of the Afghan political and, le uh, 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 and military leadership and armed forces were, was not anticipated. There are many lessons to be learned and I intend to conduct a thorough assessment of NATO's engagement in Afghanistan. North America and Europe must continue to stand together in NATO. The unfolding events in Afghanistan do not change this. The shifting global balance of power, Russia's aggressive actions and the rise of China make it even more important that we keep a strong transatlantic bond. We honor the service of the hundreds of thousands of allied and partner military and civilians who have served in Afghanistan and all the Afghans who have stood with us. With that, I'm ready to take your questions. And for the first question, we'll go to Thomas Kuchka from uh, Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung. Thanks a lot and uh, good evening. Um, Secretary General, last Sunday when Kabul had fallen, uh, US foreign Secretary Blinken said that um, the US could deal with any uh, Afghan government that upholds the basic rights of its people and doesn't harbor terrorists. Now, today's statement from NATO foreign ministers goes way beyond that, including notably uh, rule of law as a condition. Um, how do you explain that difference? And how would you sum up your message uh, to the Taliban rulers in Kabul today? That's my first question. If I may add a second one, could you please explain in which framework you intend to do this thorough investigation 
um, of the uh, Residue Support Mission. Thank you. First of all, uh, we discussed at the meeting today, uh, and I raised the issue of a, a thought of um, assessment uh, lessons learned process, not only o o about uh, the Residue Support Mission, but NATO's total engagement in Afghanistan over two decades. And as you know, that started with the uh, ISAF mission, uh, and then that turned into the rest of support uh, in 2014. So, uh, so uh, uh, we have been there for close to 20 years, um, and uh, we have uh, uh, invested a lot in blood and treasure in Afghanistan. And uh, I think we should now uh, have a very honest and clear-eyed assessment of uh, 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 what went wrong, but also what we achieved. And uh, I will initiate that as soon as uh, possible. Exactly how that will be done, I have to uh, come back to that, but uh, it was broad support, uh, support from allies to the idea of an assessment of the engagement, to, have, to learn lessons and to uh, mitigate and learn, uh, so we uh, uh, um, yeah, draw the right lessons from the engagement in Afghanistan. And, and I have a humble approach, because uh, when we see the challenges, uh, uh, the crisis we are faced with in Afghanistan, of course there are some serious lessons to be learned uh, after two decades uh, in, in Afghanistan for NATO. Um, uh, then, fundamentally, the message from all allies, of course, to all, and also the United States, uh, and also what is reflected in the statement from foreign ministers today, is the same. Uh, that. Uh, the government, uh, the rulers, the, the Taliban, uh, they, uh, they, they in Kabul, uh, in Afghanistan, they need to live up to their international commitments um, to uh, not harbor, support t uh, international terrorist organizations like Al Qaeda, ISIS, uh, to respect uh, uh, human rights, including the rights of women. Uh, and also to uh, give a free passage to people so they can leave the country. Uh, and that, of course, also includes Afghans. Uh, and this has been expressed by allies, individual allies, and today also in a uh, joint statement by uh, all NATO allies uh, coming from the Foreign Ministerial Meeting. For the next question, we'll go to Paris. Uh, Melissa Bell for CNN. Secretary General, thank you very much. Uh, I wanted to ask you, first of all, whether you agreed with the statement that's been made these last few days, that this was the greatest debacle in the history of NATO. Also, whether you don't think that what's happened these last few days is really a nail in the coffin of Article 5, that allies can go into battle together, but once they don't withdraw together as a coalition, NATO has a problem. This is a tragedy, uh, first and foremost, for the people of Afghanistan. Uh, we have uh, been there for 20 years. Uh, we have uh, um, deployed hundreds of thousands of NATO troops. Uh, several thousand have paid the ultimate price. Uh, and uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, uh, non-US allies uh, have served alongside uh, US soldiers in Afghanistan, and more than 1,000 have paid the ultimate price. So this has really been... Uh, huge efforts by this alliance. Um, when the United States signed an agreement with Taliban back in uh, February 2020, uh, of course, uh, then it was very difficult for uh, European allies to continue to stay. Uh, because as you alluded to, we went into Afghanistan as, an reaction, uh, as, as a response to an attack on the United States. And uh, when the United States decided to end its military mission there, uh, with the agreement uh, signed back in February 2020, then uh, uh, it was uh, no viable practical option for uh, the other allies, European allies and Canada, uh, to remain without the United States. NATO remains a strong alliance. Uh, NATO has implemented the biggest reinforcement of collective defence in Europe since the end of the Cold War. Uh, and, uh, and it was a very clear message from the meeting today that whatever happens in Afghanistan, that should not undermine our ability to protect NATO allied countries, NATO allied territory. And, uh, and uh, that was a very clear message from the four ministers today. The next question goes to uh, Reuters and uh, Sabine Siebold. Thank you, Secretary General. Um, I wanted to ask you whether you have um, any idea or how long you expect Kabul airport to, to remain open. Um, 
and to to uh, continue evacuations. And the second one, if I may, um, <clears throat> you thanked several states for um, establishing security at Kabul airport, uh, amongst them Turkey. Could you work out a little bit on that one, please? Thank you. So Turkey has been responsible for the airport uh, for several years uh, and uh, and uh, they continue to play a key role in operating the airport. The big difference now is of course that because of the crisis, because of the difficulties, because of the, the, the huge evacuation effort, uh, uh, other allies and especially the United States has also deployed uh, a large number of troops to uh, uh, the airport uh, and, uh, and all allies thanked uh, uh, today um, uh, those allies who are helping to operate the airport, in particular uh, Turkey, the United States, United Kingdom, but also some other allies who have deployed different kinds of capabilities uh, to be able to run the airport. Uh, and also um, several hundred uh, NATO officials are supporting, uh, civilian officials, so civilian staff are also helping to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to operate uh, the uh, airport in, in close cooperation with uh, uh, with uh, uh, the United States and other NATO uh, allies. Um, um, uh, then uh, on the timelines, um, that was an issue that was discussed during the meeting today and uh, several allies raised the issue of uh, potentially extending the timeline uh, to get more people out. Uh, the US has stated that uh, the timeline um, uh, ends on the uh, 20, 31st of August, uh, but several allies raised during the discussion today the need to potentially extend that uh, to be able to get more people out. Our focus is to get, uh, of course, our own uh, staff, people, uh, 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 people working for, 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 for NATO, for NATO allied countries, for partner countries, but also Afghans. And uh, we are working hard to help the Afghans. Uh, we have been able to get some out, but we we are uh, working hard to get more Afghans out uh, of Afghanistan. For the next question, we go to uh, GOTV News from Pakistan and Khalid Hamid Farooqi. Uh, Secretary General, it seems that Pakistan emerging as a consensus builder, contacting uh, previous Afghan uh, government, uh, previous Mujahideen Abdullah Abdullah Hikmatyar and Karzai, and bringing all Afghan faction together so will you support these efforts of consensus building uh, by the Pakistan? I think what is important now is that um, uh, whatever new government we will get in Kabul, that is, this is an inclusive uh, government uh, 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 and uh, everything that uh, can help to support such a process, uh, I think, uh, uh, is helpful. Um, when it comes to Pakistan, I think that Pakistan has a special responsibility, partly because Pakistan is a neighbor of Afghanistan and partly because of uh, Pakistan's close relationship to Taliban. Uh, so uh, uh, I think Pakistan has a special uh, responsibility to make sure that uh, Afghanistan live up to its international, uh, uh, that Afghanistan live, live up to its uh, international commitments. And, uh, and also uh, that uh, uh, Afghanistan uh, not once again becomes a, a safe haven for international terrorists. Uh, a stable Afghanistan is in the interest of all countries, uh, not least neighbors as, uh, as Pakistan. The next question goes to Washington Post uh, and uh, Rhys Tebow. Hi, thank you. Secretary General, before Kabul fell, you warned the Taliban that, quote, they will not be recognized by the international community if they take the country by force. Now that they've done that, what is NATO's position on recognizing the Taliban as the government of Afghanistan? Is recognition out of the question or is it instead conditioned on a set of criteria? And does NATO currently have a line of communication uh, with the Taliban? Thank you. So NATO is not a nation, so NATO does not recognize states. Uh, but of course, NATO allies uh, can do uh, that. And it was uh, clearly stated in the meeting today uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, diplomatic recognition uh, is, is, is something which uh, 
uh, it has to be conditions on uh, how uh, the new government uh, behave and to what extent they live up to their international uh, commitments. So, so the message is reflected in the statement agreed by foreign ministers today, uh, and, and that is about the need for uh, Afghanistan to live up to commitments. For instance, a commitment in the agreement with the United States, signed uh, in February uh, 2020 or, 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 or last year, where they clearly state that uh, they should not support, provide a, a, a safe haven uh, for international terrorist groups like Al-Qaeda or, or ISIS. So that's a very obvious and important commitment because uh, NATO went into Afghanistan. Our main task uh, in Afghanistan has to be uh, to prevent the country from once again becoming a, a platform for launching terrorist attacks against our own uh, countries. For 20 years we have prevented such attacks, uh, terrorist attacks from Afghanistan against NATO allied countries. We need to preserve those gains and we also discussed during the meeting today how we can uh, preserve those gains, including by stating very clearly to the Afghan, new Afghan rulers, the uh, uh, new government, that uh, uh, these are commitments we expect them to, uh, to adhere to. Uh, then, of course, it also uh, is relevant uh, when it comes, also, we also expect them to live up to other commitments, including the respect for uh, uh, human rights and the rights of, uh, of women. And, and, yeah. and then some NATO allies have not recognized uh, uh, the new government, uh, partly also because there is no new government to recognize. Uh, but, uh, but, but some allies, and I think that is important, they have what I will call operational tactical contact with uh, Taliban. But that is to ensure safe passage, to manage the situation outside the airport and so on. That is, uh, we have to distinguish this kind of tactical operational contact with Taliban, which I think is needed, important, uh, and diplomatic recognition. That's two different uh, things. The next question goes to Lailuma Sadid from Brussels Morning. Thank you very much, Oana and Mr. Secretary General. As you know, for everyone asking about uh, recognition and also about the Pakistan, my question would be about what is next? And also, how do you see the future without any government and this kind of situation? And also, NATO has a unified commitment for Afghanistan to get out the people, as you said, but who can make this together? Because some of the uh, NATO country, they couldn't send any airplane or some kind of things for uh, sending uh, or bringing back the Afghan people. How do you manage this kind of things, especially for the moment with the huge uh, people are arriving and are at the airport? And uh, I hope in this way, it becomes solve all the problem that they leave the Afghan people to, to uh, if they want to leave the Afghanistan, they leave them. Thank you very much. The meeting we had today uh, was a very timely and I will also say constructive meeting of NATO foreign ministers because we addressed some uh, the urgent issue of evacuation, but also uh, some of the more uh, longer term challenges uh, counter-terrorism, uh, how to have a common political approach to the new uh, rulers in Kabul, uh, and also how to uh, con uh, conduct a lessons learned uh, process and how to maintain the unity of the alliance. When it comes to the immediate and most urgent task of evacuation, um, I welcome the fact that uh, s many allies today uh, clearly uh, made offers to host Afghans. Uh, to receive them in their countries. Uh, so, uh, uh, so if we get them out, there are uh, many NATO allies who are ready to receive uh, either temporarily or uh, at uh, uh, um, also a permanent uh, uh, resettlement uh, in NATO countries. Uh, many allies have also uh, uh, sent down planes. Uh, so we are, of course, in the United States, but also other allies have uh, planes uh, in the region and many have been able to fly in and also take out uh, 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 people from uh, the airport. The challenge, so that's, that's in a way, 
in a very dire and difficult situation, at least some good news that uh, allies are ready to, to, to receive Afghans and also uh, ready to send uh, down planes and help to evacuate. The big challenge is to get people on those planes. Uh, the limiting factor is not the lack of planes. The limiting factor now is actually the ability to get people into the airport process and on the planes. So that was an issue that was thoroughly discussed in the meeting today, raised by many allies. Uh, the need uh, to work harder on how can we get more people who are now outside the airport, into the airport, then processed and then onto the planes. Because the paradox is that we <laughs> have more planes than we have uh, people uh, or passengers. Uh, because uh, the, the, the process of getting people into, and especially Afghans into the airport, processed, uh, uh, is now the big, big, big challenge. So I think that's one of the reasons why this meeting was so important, because then we had 30 allies sitting around the table and, and focusing on perhaps the most difficult and urgent task now, and that is to able, enable uh, more people and make it possible for more people, especially Afghans, to get to the airport and into the airport. I, I would like to ask about the women activists. Is there any guarantee they will be safe? This is my really always support for the women. NATO allies um, are doing whatever they can uh, to uh, get as, as many people as possible out of Afghanistan. Um, uh, we have been able to get thousands out already, also many Afghans. Uh, several NATO allies are also uh, uh, in particular raised uh, the issue of uh, uh, not only helping um, citizens from our own countries, from partner nations uh, and Afghans who have worked with us, but also other Afghans at risk. But again, we face the same challenge to get uh, these people to the airport and into the airport. And that was one of the uh, main issues discussed at the meeting today. Uh, and we are working hard on how we can uh, make more progress on uh, getting uh, Afghans at risk uh, to the airport and, and into the airport. Next, we go to DPA. Thank you. Secretary General, um, how many Afghans who worked for NATO still have to be evacuated? And can you tell us how many places for relocation were pledged today by allies? Um, and if I may, another question, is it correct um, that there are plans to set up a central reception center for rescued Afghans in, in Kosovo or Poland? Thank you. Uh, as we are discussing different uh, different uh, uh, sites for temporary uh, uh, staging uh, housing uh, areas for 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 Afghans coming out of Afghanistan, uh, and then several allies uh, uh, offered uh, uh, declared a readiness to also resettle on a more permanent uh, basis. Uh, so so the challenge now is actually not to find. Uh, allies who are uh, willing to receive Afghans either on a temporary basis or permanent basis. The challenge is to get them to the airport uh, and into the airport because we have uh, countries ready to receive, we have planes uh, uh, ready to transport them. Uh, the challenge is, 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 is to, to get them to the airport and that, that was one of the main issues uh, uh, raised, discussed at the meeting today. And I think that in itself that you have 30 allies uh, pinpointing or, or making so, uh, so clear, so, say, stating so clearly and, and also addressing and discussing how we can make progress on that, uh, that issue uh, uh, is uh, uh, important because this is an urgent need to make progress on, uh, on how to get more people to the airport and in, into the airport. Uh, then your second question, what was that? Uh, on the figures, how many Afghans well, uh, well, uh, well, have still to be evacuated and uh, how many places for relocation uh, were pledged? As we, we have, we have, uh, uh, we have, we have uh, NATO, as we have around 800 uh, 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 contractors and others who have worked for NATO. Uh, that number has now been reduced uh, uh, to around or a bit less than 500 at the airport. Uh, and a bit less than 200 of those are Afghans. But th that's those Afghans who have worked for uh, uh, NATO, for the NATO agencies. Then, of course, 
On top of that, you have a lot of Afghans who have worked for different NATO allied countries, like Germany, uh, uh, like, uh, like the United Kingdom and many other allies. That number is much bigger, uh, but I know that uh, NATO allies together uh, and individual allies are now uh, doing whatever they can to try to get uh, all these uh, Afghans out. And for our last question, we'll go to Entebbe and uh, Idun Lavik. Uh, thank you, Secretary General. Uh, do you know the extent of NATO finance arms that are now possibly in control of the Taliban? And is NATO considering destroying any weapons or vehicles to ensure that they are not getting in Taliban hands? Thank you. As so NATO has ended its, uh, its uh, uh, military operation in Afghanistan, uh, as we all know, some NATO allies are present at the uh, airport. Um, uh, and uh, and uh, NATO ended its military mission in Afghanistan because uh, 30 allies agreed to do so. Um, uh, we agreed to do so uh, this spring, but that was a direct result of the uh, US agreement with the Taliban in February um, uh, 2020, uh, where they agreed to end the US uh, presence. Um, um, we have... Uh, uh, Different NATO allies, like Norway, like uh, and many other allies, they have done whatever they can over now several months, uh, partly to, of course, get all their soldiers out, but also to uh, um, take back as much equipment as possible. Uh, uh, some equipment has also been uh, destroyed, but uh, I don't have the exact numbers for all the different allies because many allies operated uh, in Afghanistan and uh, each ally have had the responsibility for their own equipment. Uh, some has been taken by, back and some has been uh, destroyed. And some, and some is, of course, still in Afghanistan. Thank you very much. Uh, this concludes this press conference. Thank you.